Hey guys, welcome back to day 29, uh, the examples. So let's dive in right, right into the examples. We'll start with 72. I have to calculate delta G for the reaction and E for the reaction, and we're given K. And we're also given N equals three. So for this, there's two equations I'll use. Delta G, standard equals negative R T natural log K and E standard equals 0 0.0592 volts over N log of K. And I will go back always using K and N. The thing is, I could use, once I find delta G, I could figure out E from delta G, or if I found E, I can find delta G from E. I don't tend to do that. Because if I make a mistake in my equation, right, I put R wrong, I transpose some numbers, or I forget the decimal point or something like that, and I don't catch it, then my second answer is going to be wrong because my first answer is wrong. So I always go back to the conditions of the problem if I can. Let's look first at delta G. Delta G, negative 8.3145. Joules per Kelvin mole. Of course, we're at the magic 25 degrees Celsius, which is 298K, times the natural log of 0 0.050. So if I put that in my calculator, I should get 7,000, oh, 7,422 joules or 7. 0.4 kilojoules, which is a positive number. K, if we look, K is less than 1. If K is less than 1, we are reacting favored. So the forward direction is non-spontaneous. So it works. E, E standard equals 0 0.0592 volts over 3 times the log of 0 0.050. So for E, I get negative 0 0.026 volts. Not spontaneous. Makes sense, K is less than one. There's 72. Seventy four. You have a voltaic cell. Boy, is this redox reaction. Iron, magnesium, or iron 3 and magnesium going to iron and magnesium 2 plus. Calculate cell potential under the sets of conditions. So we know voltaic cell E standard is positive. That, that right away tells us. Okay, we're at magically 25 degrees Celsius, which is very convenient. So standard conditions for A, we use our standard redox potentials. So I know who is my red. Reduced would be, looks like iron, wouldn't it? Be Fe3 plus plus 3 electrons going to Fe. Right, so E standard would be whatever it is. My oxidation would be Mg going to Mg2 plus plus two electrons with its reduction. So if I go to my standard redox potentials here, there's iron three, where's iron three? Not seeing iron three. Ah, oh, there it is, right there. Negative point zero three six. Negative zero point zero three six volts, and the magnesium is down here at negative two point three seven. But we flipped it, so it's positive two point three seven. Okay, adding those up, we would get, what, 2.33 volts? That's 
good. So for A, that is what the answer is. E standard equals 2.33 volts. Now, I would recommend we have to put, what, we have to do a 2 here, the red one, and a 3 to the ox one. If I add up this reaction, I get, well, it's right there, right? It, it is right here. And so, but the thing is that we know it's 6, N equals 6 moles of electrons, right? Because 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 times 2 is 6. So N is 6. Q for this reaction would be magnesium 2 plus cubed all over iron 3 plus squared. That's very important, right, for our Nernst equation for part B. So for part B, E equals E standard minus 0 0.0592 volts over N log of Q. So we're looking for E. We don't know E. E standard is 2.33 volts. Minus 0 0.0592 volts over 6 moles of electrons times the log of, we have 4 magnesium, that would be 2.5 molar, and for iron, it's 1.0 times 10 negative third. And we are going to have to cubed and square. Whew. That's fun. So E for the cell now, for B, would be all that math. I get 2.26 volts. Now, for C, is the same thing, except this red number becomes 2, and the black number becomes 1.5 times anything of third. So for C, E equals 2.33 volts minus 0 0.0592 volts over 6 times the log of... And it was what again? 1.5 times 10 negative third. And two, two. And this one's cubed, and this one is squared. So for C, my cell potential looks like it's going to be 2.42 volts. So there's cell potential and concentration for 74. Number 78, a voltaic cell. So we know E standard is positive already. Let's just highlight that. And we remember to put E standard is positive. Because the lead, lead 2, and copper, copper 2 plus. Okay, so we need to figure out what is the so the initial cell potential is not the standard because there's initial concentrations but we still need to figure out the standard cell potential so we have lead lead two so we write these as reductions pb2 plus plus two electrons going to pb with that standard cell potential and cu2 plus plus two electrons going to Cu with a standard cell potential. And I look those up. I see lead two is negative 0.13 volts. And I see copper two plus two electrons is right here, 0.34 volts. So, Lead was negative 0 0.13 volts and copper was 0 0.34 volts. So who gets flipped? Well, if I flip 
copper and add them, they're negative. If I flip lead, they're going to be positive. So that means lead is oxidized. So my oxidized would be Pb going to Pb2 plus, plus two electrons, with a standard now of 0 0.13 volts. And my reduction would be Cu2 plus, plus two electrons going to Cu. 3, 4 volts. So my overall reaction, which is very important for us, the standard cell potential of 0 0.47 volts would be Pb solid plus copper 2 plus aqueous going to uh, lead to aqueous and copper solid. And N is going to be two electrons, two moles of electrons, because it's a two and a two. That's very good. Q, well, what's my reaction quotient going to be? Q will equal the concentration of lead, two plus, all over the concentration of copper, two plus. Okay. So for A, E equals E standard. Now, are we at 25 degrees Celsius? Of course we are. So minus, no, sorry, she's not minus, plus 0 0.0592 volts over N log of Q. I'm sorry, it is minus. I don't know why I wrote down plus. It's minus. So E, which we're looking for, equals E standard 0 0.47 volts minus 0 0.0592 volts over N, which is 2 moles of electrons, times the log of our numbers. Lead. The initial concentration of lead is 0 0.5. 0 0.05. 0, 0.500, 0, 0, and initial concentration of copper is 1.50. To confirm, yes, 0 0.05 and 1.5. So my initial voltage would be 0 0.51 volts. B, what happens when cell potential copper 2, the concentration has gone to 0.2. Okay. So let's rewrite our equation here for B. Cu2 plus aqueous plus lead 2, or lead, sorry, going to lead 2 plus and Cu. That's a horrible solid. There we go. So we start with initially 1.50 molar copper 2 and 0 0.0500 molar lead 2. Now we're saying our concentration goes to 0.2. So now it's at 0 0.20 molar. Well, there's a change there of minus 1.3 molar, which means we have to add 1.3 molar to this side. So this becomes 1.35 molar. That's very important. So I'm not just saying, oh, copper's now 0.2 and put 0.2 in for this red number like we did in A and then keep the black number the same. It changed. So now E equals E standard 0 0.47 volts minus 0 0.0592 volts over two moles electrons times the log. And now we have new numbers. For lead 2, it's 1.35 molar, and for copper, it's 0 0.2 molar. So that means our, now our observed potential happens to be 0.45. I might be used just to point them out for A, B, C. 
What are the concentrations of lead and copper when the cell potential falls to 0.35 volts? Oh, ho, ho. So for C, I want to know the concentration of Cu2+, plus, the concentration of Pb2+, plus, and we know that E is 0 0.35 volts. Okay. Reaction again. Cu2+, plus, plus Pb solid going to Pb2+. Plus. And CU stop. So initially I have again 1.50 molar and 0.0500 molar. Some is going to react. I don't know how much. Minus X plus X. So this should look really familiar. 1.50 minus X and 0 0.0500 plus X. And now, instead of putting it into the equilibrium constant equation, we're going to put them in an inverse equation. 0 0.35 volts equals 0 0.47 volts minus 0 0.0592 volts over 2 times the log of, we have Lead up top, 0 0.0500 plus X and 1.50 minus X. And now it's algebra. Yay, algebra. Okay, so I'm going to subtract. I take 0 0.35 volts minus 0 0.47 volts. Then I'm going to multiply that by the negative 2 and divide it by 0 0.0592 volts. And that will give me the log of these numbers. 0 0.0500 plus x and 1.50 minus x. So what I do first, I move the 0.47 over. And then I multiplied by both sides by negative 2 and divided by the 0 0.0592 volts. If we do that, I get 4.05 equals the log of 0 0.0500 plus x all over 1.50 minus x. Now what? Get rid of the log. Second log, right? 10 to both sides. And we end up with 11,220 equals 0 0.0500 plus x all over 1.50 minus x. Okay, bring this up. So we have 11,220 times. The 1.50 minus x equals 0 0.0500 plus x. Distribute, I get 16 or 16830 minus 11220x equals 0 0.0500 plus x. All right, get everything on the same side. So X's go to the right, numbers go to the left. I end up with 16829.95 equals 11220, oh, 221, excuse me, X. So X ends up being 1.5. Okay. So x is 1.5. Wonderful. If I bring this back up here now, for copper, 1.5 minus x, so the concentration of Cu2 plus is practically zero for our purposes. You'd have to actually go out beyond the sig figs 
to get a number. So for us, it's zero. And for lead, the concentration of lead would be 1.55 molar. And that would be our concentrations for our cell, which means our cell is practically done. All right, now, is there still technically copper in the solution? Yes, but not very much at all. Okay, next one. 109. What is the cell potential of the electrode here? I'm sorry, what's the cell potential of this electrochemical cell? And it depends on the pH of the solution. Look at this stuff. So we've had equilibrium going on, ice tables. Now we have pH, all in chapter 19. This is kind of fun. So we're looking for, right there, what's the pH? E cell is point, and gives us E cell. All right, well, what's going on here? What is platinum? Platinum is an inert electrode. Who's oxidized? Right here. Who's reduced? Right there. So my reduction standard cell potential would be Cu2 plus, plus two electrons going to Cu, with that being 0.34 volts, like it was a lot. We use copper, we've used copper several times now, but if we want to look back up, again, there's copper right there. It's high like copper. We're also going to highlight our standard hydrogen electrode, which we use. Back to 109. Our oxidation would be H2 gas going to 2H plus aqueous plus two electrons with a standard cell potential of zero. So our standard is 0 0.34 volts for our cell and our overall reaction is copper 2 plus H2 goes to copper metal that's a solid right and 2H plus aqueous and it's a two electron transfer perfect so now I have my reaction. I can get Q. Q would be equal to the concentration of H plus squared all over the concentration of copper 2 plus and the pressure of H2 gas. So now we can throw in the Nernst equation here. E equals E standard plus zero plus minus. 0 0.0592 volts over N log of Q because we are at 25 degrees Celsius, I'm assuming. It doesn't tell you the temperature. So E, which is 3.55 millivolts or 0 0.355 volts equals 0 0.34 volts minus 0 0.0592 volts over two moles of electron log of Q here. So let's bring in Q. We are looking for H plus. H plus squared. And on the bottom, I have copper two, and copper two is one molar. And H is one atmosphere. Well, talk about convenient. Right, they go away. So how do we solve? Well, first thing I do is bring 0.34 over, right? And so I get zero point, was that zero one five volts equals negative zero point zero five nine two volts over two times the log of H plus squared. Okay, now we multiply by two, right? We're gonna 
multiply by two and I want a different color. Bring the two up and bring the negative 0.0592 down. So if I do that, I get negative 0 0.5068, no units, equals the log of h plus squared. Raise both sides, get rid of the log, raise both sides to 10, second log in the calculator. And I get uh, 0 0.311 equals h plus squared. Square root both sides. I get 0 0.558 molar equals concentration h plus. pH equals the negative log, concentration h plus. So the pH is negative log of 0 0.558. So it looks like my pH happens to be 0 0.25. Sounds good. So recapping, what do we do with this problem? I had to figure out the standard cell potential, figure out Q, what the expression for Q is, and then just plug everything into the nurse equation and solve for the concentration H plus, which pH ends up being 0.25. There's 19, there's 129, there's 103. Problem 103, we have to consider uh, the unbalanced redox reaction. So that probably means we need to balance the reaction. You got the reaction there. Balance the equation, it tells us to balance the equation. Determine the volume. There's the question. Determine the volume of a 0.5 molar potassium permanganate, which is the permanganate here, required to completely react with 2.85 grams of zinc. So yeah, we need a balanced chemical equation here. Oxidation numbers. It looks like zinc goes from 0 to 2 plus, so it's going to be oxidized. Reduction, probably going to be manganese, because we're at plus two. We know oxygen is going to be minus two. They add up to negative one. One there. What's my negative one? So negative two times four, negative eight plus seven. So manganese is plus seven. So my reduction here, I have MnO4 minus plus how many electrons? Seven to two. That'd be a difference of five going to Mn2 plus. Well, balance the oxygen for waters, and I would need 8H pluses. Perfect. It doesn't say if it's acidic or basic, so we're going to go with the acidic. Then we have the oxidation, zinc, going to zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons. And that's balanced. 2 does not equal 5, so it looks like the top one's going to be multiplied by 2, and the bottom one's going to be multiplied by 5. Adding them up. 16 H pluses plus 2 MnO4 minuses. Two permanganates plus 10 electrons plus five zinc solids going to two manganese twos plus eight waters plus five zinc two pluses plus 10 electrons. And I'm going to change the 16 to pink, the 2 to pink, 
the five, the two, the eight, the five. And the 10 electrons are perfect, they're gone. So now we have, what, 0.5 molar? And I wanna know how many milliliters. And we're starting with 2.85 grams of zinc. So now it's just a basic solution stoichiometry problem. So once we get the equation balanced, we're good to go. 2.85 grams of zinc. Well, we know that zinc is 65.39 grams of zinc is one mole of zinc. And we know it's going to be five moles of zinc to two moles of KMNO4. I'm throwing the potassium in there because it's potassium permanganate. Potassium is a spectator ion, so it's not in our net ion equation. And then we know that there are 0 0.500 moles of KMNO4, potassium permanganate, for every 1,000 milliliters of solution. So the 2.5 grams times 2 times 1,000 divide 65.39, divide 5, divide 0.5, I end up with 34.9 milliliters of solution. Not bad. Problem 129. Suppose a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell generator produces electricity for a house. Balanced redox reactions, standard cell potential to predict the volume of hydrogen gas STP required each month to generate electricity. Assume we're going to use that much. Well, let's talk about this energy real quick. We have 1.2 times 10 to the third kilowatt hour. So let's rewrite those. Kilo watt hour. So this is 1.2 times 10 to the third times 10 to the third for kilo. Watt is a joule per second. An hour we know one hour is 3,600 seconds, right? 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute. 3,600 zero, zero, seconds. So we multiply that. 1.2 times 10 to the third times 10 to the third times 3,600. I get 4.32 times 10 to the ninth joules. That's the energy required that we need. Okay, so that's the amount of energy we need. The hydrogen oxygen fuel cell generator. So if I were you, I would look at my textbook. Is it, oh, it's, it's went away. Search fuel cell, and this comes up in 1907, and it tells you the oxidation and the reduction. So oxidation of the anode gives you 2H plus plus 4OH minus, four waters, four electrons, reduction, and the overall reaction. Perfect. So let's write those down in our notes here. So my reduction and actually let's look at these here. So if we look my fuel cell, I have this one as the reduction and the oxidation would be this one that's flipped. So let's write those down. Now I have them written down, and we notice that the bottom one technically needs to be doubled. Do my equation. And so if I add these up, oh, I do. We're going to get. Uh, 2H2 gas plus 
4OH minus aqueous plus O2 gas plus 2H2O plus 4 electrons going to 4H2O plus 4 electrons plus 4OH minus. And so if I cancel out common things, we get 2H2 gas plus O2 gas going to 2H2O liquid. And my standard redox potential would be 1.23 uh, volts. So there is my redox reaction for my fuel cell. Now, the secret here is to remember that 1.23 volts is the same thing as 1.23 joules per coulomb. So I'm starting with, and I used red, 4.32 times 10 to the 9th joules. And when we multiply, I need joules on the bottom. Well, I can use... 1.23 joules per one coulomb. And then we know there are 96,000, 96,485 coulombs, one mole of electrons. Then we know that there are four moles of electrons transferred and two moles of H, two. And then since we're at STP, one mole of H2 is 22.4 liters. There we go. And so this turns out to be 4.1 times 10 to the fifth liters of H2 at STP. That's a lot of H2. Number 118. The KSP of zinc hydroxide is 1.8 times 10 to the 14th. Buy an E cell for the half reaction here. Okay, well, the reduction Looks like I'm going to have zinc 2. All right. Plus two electrons going to zinc. That E standard is negative 0 0.76 volts and N equals 2 for that reduction. So I have zinc 2, right? Because we know that zinc, it's sparingly soluble, so it's going to go partially into solution to to get um, reduced. So KSP now, all right, let's do the reaction. ZnOH2 solid going to Zn2 plus plus 2OH minus. Okay, so KSP, the actual expression is zinc 2 hydroxide squared. Okay. And they gave us the KSP. So if we were to do this, and I don't know if I can select that or not. So if I did an ice table here, I just have to have some zinc hydroxide in solution. Zero, zero, plus X, plus two X, or S, X, two X. So we can throw into KSB here. We know it's 1.8 times 10 to negative 14 equals X and two X squared. So this is where it becomes, right, 1.8 times 10 to the 14th. Take your deep breath, 4x cubed, 
right? 4x cubed. Because it's very easy to make a silly mistake, make it like 2x squared or 4x squared or something like that. Don't, don't do that. Take the deep breath, slow down, do it. So then if we um, throw out this x equals 1.65, I don't need the brackets, 1.65 times 10 to negative fifth molar. So that's KSP, that's the concentration of, of zinc in solution. What's Q going to be here? All right, so if I look at this reaction, Q would be the concentration of hydroxide squared over nothing. All right, so if I plug into my nurse equation, E equals E standard minus 0 0.0592 volts over N log of Q. Q is concentration of hydroxide squared. E equals E standard of negative 0 0.76 volt minus 0 0.0592 volts over n n is 2 times the log what's the concentration of hydroxide well x represents zinc hydroxide is 2x so if i double this times 2 my hydroxide concentration looks like it's 3.30 times 10 to the negative fifth molar 0 0.30 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that'll be squared. And then E, if I do that math, I get negative 0 0.49 volts. Recap. I found the zinc redox reaction, found the standard redox reaction, did the KSP, put into the Nernst equation with the reaction given, and got a voltage. And that concludes the Nernst examples. Hope they help. Let me know if you have any questions. See you next time. Take care, guys.